Are you just learning how to edit for the first time or frustrated with the challenges of using editing software to create content? In this video, I'll be sharing the mistakes to avoid, the solutions that help you edit faster, and the tips to help make editing easier so you can create content that gets views on YouTube coming up. Hey, welcome to Video Influencers. My name is Benji Travis and we're helping build your influence income impact with online videos. Before I jump into it, I want to thank our sponsor, Licked. Licked is the world's first and only commercial music licensing platform for online video content. So make sure you check them out. We'll put the link down below and you get your first song free if you use our link. All right, so let's get into it. So the first two mistakes are pre-editing mistakes that will affect your edit session. First mistake is recording too much content. When you import all of that video into your computer, it can totally bog down the CPU. It can make it very laggy and it is so stressful. As you guys know, if you've ever had a computer that's super slow, there is nothing more Worse. This would be the first solution. Don't put too much content into your library or into your computer altogether. One way you do this is make sure you only record what you need or you only import what you're going to use in your project. Another side note here is if you actually import your content onto an external hard drive, this actually helps the hard drive on your computer not get too bogged down. I don't want to get into the technical bits of this, but this is dramatically going to help make your computer work better so there's not that much lag. Bonus tip is proxy files. If you're using Final Cut Pro to edit your projects, proxy files will actually let you create a project and not use the full data on those files. But basically, it lets you edit your whole project and when you're ready to actually export that, then it makes the full project with the full files to make high quality content. So proxy file editing is a huge hack, especially if you have a computer that's a little slower. Mistake number two is not having enough content. So I know I know this is contrary to the last point I just made, but you don't want to get into your editing session after you recorded all this content and find out you don't have the right shots. If you have to go back and reshoot things, it's going to delay you one or two days and this is no bueno. So make sure you have all the right shots. The solution here is when you go to shoot, make sure you have a storyboard and you create a shoot list so you get all the shots that you need so come time to edit, you're ready to go and you can make editing stress free. All right, now for the actual mistakes people make and the solutions for actually editing. So as you can see, I'm using Final Cut Pro. A lot of the tips I'll be giving are relevant for anybody editing, but this is gonna be specific to Final Cut Pro as well as iMovie. Now, the first mistake people make is not using shortcuts and hotkeys. So important to do this because even though it's just a mouse movement or a click, if you add up all the shortcuts that could be used during all the days, all the weeks, all the months of editing, this can be a lot of time saved. This can be as simple as command C for copying, command V for pasting, right? Uh, command X for cutting. But one of my favorites in Final Cut Pro specifically is going to your actual content library right, right here. So if I want to use this clip, I hit the I key for the beginning of the clip and then go to the part that I want to grab for the and hit the O key and then that grabs the clip that you want. And then if you press the W key, boom, it adds it to your timeline automatically. This one little shortcut will save you so much time and headache and move the process so much faster so you can actually save even more time obviously. So there are so many different shortcuts and uh, hotkeys you could be using for any editing software. I would recommend looking it up on YouTube specific to your software to get all those shortcuts to help you edit faster. So I've got my file folder open, I've got my Final Cut, I can simply just drag and drop the clip right into the timeline it makes it super easy just to add it right to my timeline. The next few mistakes people make have to do with not keeping the video interesting. Now it might, again, seem kind of obvious, but there's some simple tools you can use in your editing software to help you do this. So the first mistake is not using titles and text. So this is a great way to emphasize a point. Maybe there's a part that you want to bring more attention to, and you can simply add some titles. So here on Final Cut Pro at the top left, there's this titles and general 
generator section. And there's a whole bunch of options here um, that are already automatically made. The one I like to use the most is blur. And it, you can simply just drag it and drop it right on top. You can even put it in between clips. And what it will actually do is create a title like a uh, clip for you. So I don't really use that very often. I like to just drag the uh, title option right over top. And then that way it's gonna show up right on top of my video. So, so what you do is move your cursor right over to that thing. You double click on the actual title and you put black shirt, okay? Whatever title, you can actually drag this right from here by dragging from the crosshairs right over to where it is that you wanna put it. Again, titles and text is an easy way to add a little bit more oomph to make your videos a little bit more interesting by emphasizing key points and parts in your video. A great example of this is channel Epic Gardening. On his channel, you can see he uses text in the right points of his video. Sometimes he'll be recording a talking head uh, portion of his content. He'll offset himself in the actual video so that he can put the text right over the bare wall. So those titles enhance the point he's trying to make when he's teaching about gardening. All right, so the next editing trick that you hear a lot about, but a lot of people don't use it properly, is B-roll. All this is is a secondary angle or another piece of footage, um, an image or video that's going to add to your video project by overlaying it or actually replacing it all together, the part you're editing. So the first one is a second angle. So as you can see, I've got a second angle right here that could drop in um, and be something to keep things interesting, right? It takes the viewers into a different part of the shot to just spice it up. This is simply setting up a secondary camera on a tripod at a completely different angle so you have an option to go to. What I do often when I'm creating content is after I'm done shooting the actual video, I'll go and record you know, different pieces of video specific to B-roll I want to use for the point in that video where I'm talking about something specific, okay? Another way of doing this is you actually use stock footage. These are images and videos that represent what it is that you're talking talking about that you can actually purchase online. This is another great source for B-roll content to again, spice up your videos to make it more interesting. So the last tip I have for making your videos more interesting is changing up the scene. A lot of people, they tend to stay on one scene too long and they lose the interest of the viewer. In this ADD world, it's really important to keep things mixed up, to change the vibes. Obviously, we already talked about B-roll, about a secondary angle, uh, using different types of cuts or videos or images to enhance what you're talking about. But a rule of thumb is every five to seven seconds or less, you wanna be switching it up. This can be as simple as punching in and out. So what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm gonna pick a clip, I'm gonna cut it by hitting Control B, and again, I'm gonna uh, cut it again. I'm gonna take this clip, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this little crop function, and then I'm gonna actually zoom in on my face so that in, I focus on this area. And then I hit done, and what's gonna happen is, as I'm talking, first you see a little bit of a wider view of me, and then it's gonna change up by focusing or zooming in on me. And then once I'm done with that part, it's gonna just go ahead and crop right back out to the original angle. This is a simple way of changing things up, but honestly, the best way to do this is literally change up the scene. So the B-roll, the title and text, uh, a different angle, all those things are gonna keep the viewer interested in your video and keep their attention, which is so important for the algorithm on YouTube. Okay, so the next few mistakes are all about audio. People don't realize that some of the biggest, worst mistakes can be with audio. The first one being not using the right sound effects. You know, the right sound effects, just like titles, can really enhance a scene to make it more funny, can make it more dramatic, can literally just add a little bit more vibes to that scene, and you can use a lot of the sound effects right from your editing software. In fact, if you go right to the sound effects, you can actually see a lot of options right here on Final Cut Pro as well as iMovie. 
I actually think that all editing software has a great amount of sound effects. An example of this being used really well is my wife's vlogs. She is a master editor and you know anytime she wants to make a scene a little bit more comical she'll add the right sounds to just make it that much more funny. Let's look at a clip of my kids doing some goofy things and the sound effects and then also run that same scene without it to show you the difference. Okay go. <laughs> Okay, go. <laughs> See what I mean? It's totally different when it's lacking those right sound effects. What I love is you can often find a lot of these sound effects right in your editing software. There's usually plenty of options right there at your fingertips. Addition to sound effects is finding the right songs for that scene. A lot of people, they don't match up the right music to that scene to get the right emotion. If you pick the right song, you know a part of your video can completely have a different emotion to it depending on the feeling that you're trying to evoke in the viewer. Which reminds me of Lick, the sponsor of this video, which is a perfect place to find the right music for your videos. Lick is a digital platform letting YouTube creators legally use the songs they love. They provide commercial music from real labels for licensing on YouTube videos without the fear of losing your ad revenue to a copyright claim. So in essence, sign up once, search a wide variety of songs on their library, pick and pay for the song you want to use. Upload the video without the worry of a copyright claim and monetize. When you use our link down below, you're going to get your first song free, so go and download your first track now. The last big audio mistake people make is the music is too loud. So you scour the libraries for the perfect piece of music or the song to create the right emotion. And sometimes you're using that music, whether it's um, to be background music while you're talking or just music in general for a scene. And then you go to see the upload and the music is too loud. Sometimes when it's so obnoxious, it just takes away from the attention, maybe kind of like scares the viewer. Or if you're talking during that part and you using it as background music, it actually overtakes what you're saying so the viewer can't understand you. That is a huge fail and what I would suggest is when you're editing, um, obviously take time to find the right song, put it into your project, but then go back and listen to it on some earphones. Then listen to it on the speakers of your desktop and then finally I even go so far sometimes to actually upload it to the platform, whether it's YouTube or any other platform, to actually listen to it to see what the viewer will hear on the other end. Now that's going to the extreme, but this is a huge mistake people make, but it's so simple to fix. A bonus tip is for when you're using background music, the actual range that you want to set it up. So decibels is a measurement of sound. And for background music in Final Cut Pro, you want to have it set about negative 24 to negative 30. Generally, that's a good, soft, comfortable level for background music so you can still hear the person talking. Mistake number 10, not teasing out the finale or the main point of your video at the beginning. You know, with YouTube, the key is you gotta hook people's attention. It's already hard enough to get them to click on your videos, whether it's having a good title or thumbnail, but once you get them in there, you need to keep them in there. And one way you do this is you tease out the finale or the main part right at the beginning. The thing to keep in mind is if you're a seasoned YouTuber and you've already got an audience, you might not need to do this because people already know they're gonna get great content. But if you're somebody new and this viewer has never seen your content before, it's important to make sure they know that they can expect great content by putting the best clips right at the very beginning. The last example of that is on my food channel, Benjamin TV. When you're teaching a recipe, you kind of want to show people what they can expect. Think of a cookbook. When you look at a cookbook, usually the picture that you see of that recipe is of the final product. So you should do the same thing with your videos. What I do is I take the delivery delicious parts of the finale of that recipe and I put it right up front so that as I'm introducing the recipe I'm going to be talking about, I'm talking about the ingredients, they can see those delicious shots to see what the recipe will actually turn out to be if they also cook it themselves. The last mistake I want to talk about is falling in love with your own content. I know this might seem a little bit harsh, but the reality is, especially when you're first starting out, you put in so much effort to edit this amazing video and you don't realize it might not be as good as you think. Being objective and fair about what the audience will actually value is really important to actually creating good content. So Jizza of the Wu-Tang Clan says it best. 
Too many songs, weak rhymes that's mad long. Make it brief, son. Half short, twice strong. I know I totally butchered that whole rap, but what this epic, legendary rapper is saying, most people have too much content, it's too long, when they can make it more brief, more short, and more impactful, ultimately making for more valuable content. So the suggestion here is, delete what's not necessary and keep what is. And you can usually do this multiple times. The key takeaway is this, Go back through your whole video and ask yourself, do I absolutely need this clip to make this point? Do I absolutely need this scene to make this overall video project amazing? If you don't need it, delete it. So there you go, those are the mistakes beginner editors make and the solutions to make editing not only faster but easier to ultimately make great content that gets views on YouTube. Hopefully you guys like that. Hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this. If you wanna see our video where we talk about the 10 biggest mistakes new YouTubers make, click or tap the screen right here. If you wanna see our video about how to make videos that actually get views on YouTube, click or tap the screen right here. As always, we're helping build your influence income impact with online video. My name's Benji Travis, I'll talk to you later.